Hello out there, my name is Will Clark. I'm an instructor of sound design here at Pyramind. So today we're gonna to be looking at making 808s in Ableton using Ableton Live's uh, FM synthesizer operator. So here's a, a blank session in Ableton Live. And for today's lesson, we don't really need a lot of this stuff. All we need is a MIDI track and an audio track. We're gonna hold off on the audio track for just a little bit, but I'm going to go ahead and start with the MIDI track here. So I'm going to dump a instance of Operator on it. We're just going to start from scratch with Operator. I can find this by going to my browser, going to Instruments, and you'll find Operator here. Operator is included in all versions of Ableton Live Suite. So if you don't have Ableton Live Suite, you would need to upgrade or you can purchase Operator separately. So I'm going to go ahead and dump that on this MIDI track here, and let's go ahead and get started with this. So, the first step that I want to do here is get myself a clip. Uh, when I'm sound designing, you know, not necessarily concerned about harmonies and melodies, I like to start off with just a, a basic clip to get myself moving on this. So I can create a blank clip in Operator by simply double clicking on any of the empty clip slots and that'll give me an empty MIDI clip. I'm going to go ahead and uh, create one MIDI note in here, one MIDI note's all we need, and we want to put this MIDI note at C3. So there it is. Now if I extend this out a bit, let's make it about a quarter note, that should be good for now. Um, as we go along, you know, any of these things that we start talking about, you definitely want to uh, go back and change. Uh, we're going to be making a lot of 808s today. So any of the things that we talk about, you're gonna wanna go back and, and fiddle with. So let's uh, start with a quarter note there. I'll hit play on this. Sounding good so far. So let's jump into operator here. So this is operator. For those of you guys not familiar with it, um, operator is capable of all sorts of synthesis types, uh, mainly FM synthesis, but this type of synthesis that we're gonna be looking at today is additive synthesis. So here in Operator we have four oscillators. So an oscillator in a synthesizer is what makes the noise. The way that Operator is set up uh, by default is in an FM uh, configuration. Meaning, in FM synthesis, we use oscillators to affect the sound of other oscillators. So the first thing that we want to do here in Operator is set it up so that's not the case. We're not gonna be using FM synthesis today. We're concerned mostly about additive synthesis. So the first thing I wanna do is jump into the main tab here of Operator. And up here we have these different square looking things. Um, these are dictating how the different oscillators in this synthesizer are configured. Uh, by default, like I said, they're in an FM configuration, meaning that one oscillator affects the sound of the next oscillator, affects the sound of the next, and so on. So we don't want that. We want our oscillators to be independent of each other. So if we just go down all the way to the far right over here, we want to activate this uh, little guy here. This essentially means that each oscillator goes out to the output and out to our speakers separately. So there's no FM uh, cross matrixing or modulation going on here. Um, all right. So currently we have one oscillator active here. So if I hit play here on this clip, we'll hear just this one oscillator playing. Sounds good so far. So um, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to use this first oscillator here to act as our, our sub bass. So this is what's gonna make all of the big boom of our 808. Now, um, there's multiple ways to do this and you can experiment around with this a little bit, but the main thing we're gonna be focusing on is the this operator's envelope. The envelope is sort of like a modulation line, so an automation uh, of sorts for the volume knob. So the volume knob is going to follow the path of this envelope, for those of you guys that aren't familiar with envelopes. Now, the shape of the envelope we're looking for is a pretty straightforward one. Um, this, is how you, this envelope is how you make most percussion noises, uh, most kick drums, anything. In, when you're creating drums and synthesis, this is about what it should look like. And it looks something like this. 
pretty straightforward. Uh, now let's dive into that a little bit more. Essentially what we're doing here is we've taken the sustain knob all the way down to negative infinity. The sustain is how is the level that the oscillator stays at as you hold down the note. So if I hit play here, we should hear that um, pretty quickly. It should go down to silence. Let's hear this. We're well on our way to making a kick drum. Doesn't necessarily sound like one quite yet, but let's uh, uh, keep going here. So the first thing I want to do is drop this down by an octave. This is supposed to be a big sub boom. So if we go down here to our course, this is sort of like multiplication for what note we should be playing. So if we put it down to 0.5, we should be getting an octave lower. All right, it's already starting to sound sort of like a kick drum. We have a big old transient is what this is called in front, and then it goes down to silence. Now, uh, the parameter that we want to mess with to uh, shape this envelope, and we're gonna be doing a lot of this sort of shaping today, is the decay time. You'll see it'll last a little longer. Uh, if I make the decay time last longer, um, I can make it shorter. So it's just sort of a blip. But that's sort of the beginning there. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and turn the release up just a little bit so that it doesn't cut off real quick. All right, we've got a good sound going so far. All right, so the next part of this sub oscillator that we wanna change if we look over here, currently we're looking at our envelope, and that's this little button right there. If we go over here, we can actually see the waveform of our oscillator. So this part, this part of uh, operator that we're looking at right now is the additive synthesis part of operator. Additive synthesis is the most fundamental type of, of synthesis. With additive synthesis, and with synthesis in general, what we're trying to do is create what we call overtones, or harmonics. Now, when you hear a sound in the real world, like you hear someone sing a pitch, um, not only are you hearing that pitch, you're hearing the note that they're singing, but you're also hearing an almost infinite series of notes above that. Um, these notes are called harmonics. What our brain does is it takes these harmonics, these infinite series of, of pitches above our, our main note, and our brain takes that, since it's playing sort of a very similar thing, our brain interprets that as one note and, we, and gives it what we call timbre or timbre. Um, those words are used interchangeably, uh, the pronunciations. Um, now, when we do synthesis, essentially what we're trying to achieve are different types of timbres. And uh, all synthesis types of this, uh, are essentially achieve the same uh, goal in the end, but there's many, many ways to get to that end goal of different timbres. Um, now, additive synthesis is the most, ba is the most fundamental, in my opinion, that um, we actually get to add those harmonics manually. Now, uh, this is all based off the harmonic series, um, which is a, no is a great thing to look up if you're interested in finding out more about harmonics and timbers. Now, you'll be able to hear this very qu clearly as I play this note and add harmonics. Your brain is going to be able to really pick out that, I'm, uh, that these harmonics are individual notes. However, when I play it all together, in an, uh, not in that context, you'll hear that it's all sort of one sound going together. So I'll start adding some harmonics here. So adding them as individual harmonics there, as I go through that process, you can probably hear that it sort of sounds like it's playing two different notes now. However, when I create different patterns in here and just play it outright, it's going to just sound like a different type of waveform. So this is the basic principle behind um, additive synthesis, that these are essentially just volume knobs for my different um, sine wave oscillators for my different harmonics. Now, sine wave oscillators, if you'll see here, if I choose, I can also choose waveforms from right here. They have different presets. If I choose sine, 
Essentially what I get is just this one harmonic down at the very bottom. This is called our fundamental frequency. And this is the note that our brain interprets it as. A pure sine wave has no harmonics. It is simply just the fundamental frequency. Now for sub basses, this is what we want. We want it to be a real simple sound down there in the low end. That way we don't get a lot of mud. Um, so we want to use just this simple sine wave oscillator. Um, my variation on this is I like to add some harmonics real close to it, but very subtly. And this might give us a little bit of a more boomy sound. Essentially, what I'm doing here is adding another oscillator on here, just an octave up. That's what this first harmonic is. It's just one octave up. So if I play this now, it's going to be a little bit more robust as opposed to just the sine wave by itself. Now it's a little bit boomier. Sounding good already. We're gonna come back to shaping this envelope later, but let's go ahead and move on to our second oscillator here. Now this second oscillator we're gonna use for sort of the, the pop of the 808. This is sort of the high end, the higher end of it, the, what we call the transient. This is gonna create our, uh, a real hard transient for us. So again, we're gonna create that same shape in our envelope by taking the sustain down to negative infinity. And go ahead and turn the volume, go ahead and turn the volume up of your second oscillator. Now you hear what we have a real hard beginning there. If I go back to my first oscillator, I can maybe move this to K out and we can hear these two oscillators acting sort of independently here a higher one and a lower one. All right, it sounds pretty good so far. Um, I can maybe even change the octave of the second oscillator. Let's, let's change some stuff here. If I change the octave, that might give me a different effect. Sort of a more plucky sort of sound. And also if I change some of the, uh, the waveform attributes. I also like to do this in the additive fashion. Um, and this can be real fun. You can really get experimental with this part of it and draw whatever sort of thing you want in here. You can even you know, write your name or draw a funny picture or something. This, the waveform of this doesn't matter so much since it's so short, but we can get some nice timbres out of this. Um, I'm gonna go back to the envelope here, change the decay time and let's see if we get some different results. So you can hear it being really clicky there. Let's stick to a, just a normal sine wave for now. Maybe add one or two harmonics in there. And again, we'll come back to all these parameters later. We're always gonna be sort of changing this stuff around uh, as just sort of a basic principle of sound design. All right, the next important part of this, so we have our sub oscillator going. You can turn that up a bit. We have our transient oscillator. This is the one making the sort the pop to our kick drum. And the next thing we're going to want to do is add in some pitch envelope modulation. So in this uh, in this tab over here, if I just click on it, it'll show me my controls for my pitch envelope. I want to go ahead and turn this on. And I'm going to turn the amount up. Now, again, this amount, you can go back and change this around and you'll get all sorts of different results from this. Um, but this is going to be very instrumental in creating this uh, kick drum sound that we're looking for. We can already hear just by turning up that amount that we're getting some, some uh, more transient. We're getting closer to this kick drum sound that we're looking for. All right. Um, now, we're going to go and replicate this envelope shape that we've been creating in these other oscillators here. It looks a little bit different here because this envelope is capable of going into the negative range. However, we want to make sure that we keep this sustain at zero steps. So that is its default value, but let's make sure that we keep it at zero steps. We don't want to change that. What we do want to change, however, is possibly the attack amount. So I'll turn that up. And we're gonna to wanna to change this decay parameter. Again, this kick drum creation, sound design sort of thing is all based on this envelope shape and, and changing this decay time up. 
So if I change that, you can hear we're getting a real big punch now. Um, I can make it even longer, and now we're getting maybe sirens. Every good kick drum starts off with a siren. Pretty awesome sound in there. <laughs> but I'm gonna move it back down a little shorter, that way our kick drum is getting that nice big old punch. All right, we're getting pretty close to an 808 here. Um, the next thing I want to do here is I'm going to add something to this operator here. If I go into my MIDI effects, one of the MIDI effects they give you in Ableton Live is the pitch effect. Now this MIDI effects affect the incoming MIDI notes um, so that something that you play on your keyboard or in a clip is going to be altered in some way before it actually reaches the synthesizer. Um, the pitch one is very simple, it just simply transposes these MIDI notes. I'm going to go ahead and dump that down to negative 12, that's just an octave below. And now we're really getting a kick drum sound. All right, so we've got um, a bunch of parameters here that we can mess with to get different sounds out of this 808. Um, for instance, changing the decay times, like I said. Uh, maybe moving the release out so it lasts a bit longer than what our MIDI note is. All right, we're getting a pretty solid 808 sound. If you're a music producer, subscribe to our channel and stay up to date on the latest PureMind tutorial videos, track breakdowns, elite sessions, and more. Visit us at PureMind.com.